I came and you guys clapped for me, so this week you clapped again. I should come more often, I tell you, man. You guys are awesome. Uh, I am the student pastor here at Creekside. If you uh, don't know me, uh, I'd love to shake your hand and get to know you. I'm Richard Moore, and uh, John uh, Bruce is on uh, the men's retreat this weekend. I think he deserves a retreat. What do you think? <laughs> and, uh, oh, and look, my folks just walked in. I'm going to embarrass them. Ha, ha, ha. Hi, guys. So, uh, um, he, and uh, I'm pinch hitting for him, so uh, maybe I can go out to AT&T Park or whatever it's called and pinch hit for them, maybe push him into the playoffs a little bit. Uh, <laughs> need two games to do it in, right? So, should we pray for them or shall we? <laughs> so, uh, good. Let's pray this morning, huh? Lord, we thank you for your word and thank you for uh, laughter and fun that we can have together. And we pray that you would intercede here and uh, make my words your words. Lord Jesus, may the thoughts of my heart and the meditations of my mind be pleasing in your sight, my God. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. When I was a, a young guy uh, growing up, my dad, who just walked in, we can embarrass him a little bit because they're here, um, he used to call me his good son. Uh, you my good son, Richard, you know, he'd say this a lot. And it's one of those things you kind of like, Oh, yeah, Dad, you roll your eyes a little bit, you, you give him the benefit of the doubt, and you, you know, yeah, Dad, I'm your good son, uh, let's go uh, shoot some hoops or whatever, you know, just, it's just his way of connecting with me. So he called me his good son, and one day we happened to be watching TV together, I don't know if you remember this, Dad, but uh, we uh, were watching TV together, and, and there was this uh, a, a movie trailer came on, and uh, you guys remember Macaulay Culkin, uh, weird name, Home Alone 2, Little rug rat, cute, cute kid. Before he became a drug addicted teenager and strung out, right? Uh, he was a cute kid at one point. And uh, right before those rebellious teenage years, he, uh, he did a, a movie, actually a, a horror film, if you can believe it, <laughs> as a young kid. And you guys remember uh, Frodo from Lord of the Rings? If you ever seen those movies? Um, help me, Lindsay, what's his name? Elijah Wood, thank you. Elijah Wood, he's actually in the, in the trailer. He's hang, dangling Elijah Wood from his treehouse saying, if I drop you, do you think you can fly? <laughs> you know, it's one of those like, whoa, <laughs> you know. And then the, 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 the mu music comes on, do, 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 you know, the atonal piano music, you know. And it, and it goes, you know, the, the guys, you know, the, the voiceover guy, you know. The voiceover guy comes on and says, the good son. And I was like, ah. Oh. I looked over at Dad. He looked at me like, uh. we had a good laugh. I said, Dad, I promise I'm not going to hang you out of a treehouse and kill you. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. So John asked me this week to take on the, the, the good sons out of Proverbs. This We've been in the series on Proverbs, being smart people and what smart people do and how smart people act, and today we're talking about good children. And I uh, hope I was a good son, good enough to not uh, kill my dad <laughs> and uh, create a horror film out of it, but we're going to go dig into good children. And today, ch good children, honor your, your parents. That's, the, that's what we're going to dig into today. John told me to take Proverbs apart and just look at each, each reference to sons and daughters. The wild thing about that is that the whole book of Proverbs is written to sons and daughters. That's what Solomon wrote it, basically, to his son for wisdom for his life. So, hang on. <laughs> Here we go. So, uh, this morning, all of us can honor our parents if we react to them in three ways, as Proverbs describes. We'll look at all of them. Reacting to your parents in three ways. The first way we can react to our parents and honor them is by listening to their instruction. First way we can, can react to them is by listening to their instruction. Proverbs 3.1. If you have your Bibles, take them out because we're going to use them, man. We're floating everywhere today. Proverbs 3, verse 1. It's in the middle of your Bible. It's pretty easy to find. 3.1 says this. My child, never forget the things that I have taught you. Store up my commands in your heart. This is repeated so many times, I couldn't even quote them all today, talk, tell them all to you today. So I actually put a lot of them in your bullets in there, in, in your uh, handout. You could refer to those later, but this is repeated over and over. My child, listen. Listen. Listen to my instruction. Store up my commands in your heart. 
So, we also see, as, as Proverbs lays it out, that we should obey godly instruction as children. So I'm talking to you, to, to you guys today, you who are children, and everyone's really children in this, in this room. You might be adult children. Now, listening to instruction. At some point, you got to obey. If you just have instruction and you just listen all the time, at some point that's got to affect, right? So... The next point in there is obeying godly instruction. Obeying godly instruction. I always ask this kind of question uh, to, to guys whenever some, my wife says something that really makes sense, you know. When are we going to listen to our wives, right? That's the point here. So uh, uh, my, my wife, we're just interested in getting the iPhone, you know. And I justify it. It could be great for ministry. You know, all the kids have one. You know, I need an iPhone, right? I, that's how I justify it, right? <laughs> and yeah, that's a pretty, pretty good <laughs> response. <laughs> um, so I, I justify it, and I said, honey, we need, we need to get this. Um, they, they're having sales on it right now. The iPhone 4 is coming out. I justify it anyways. You know, it's really cheap now. And she's like, have you prayed about it? <laughs> you know, she says all the right things at all the right times, right? <laughs> have you prayed about it? And I thought about it for a second. I th- I have, it's going to expose my lack of spirituality, actually, as a pastor, I don't think I've ever prayed about the purchase of a cell phone in my entire life. So, uh, yeah. So, I said, well, okay, let's pray about it. As we prayed about it a little bit, went for it, and then two weeks later it gets stolen. <laughs> yeah. When are we going to listen to our wives, right? Hold off a minute, maybe. Okay? Be patient, you know. Don't go for it. I actually walked into our bedroom the other night and had a huge mounding bowl of ice cream. And my wife had looked at it and was like, Really? <laughs> That's all she said. And I was like, what? I need all this, man. Come on. <laughs> when are we going to listen, you know? The same goes for our parents, you know? They've lived a life. They've had experiences. When are we as children, even adult children, going to listen? Maybe perk up and pay attention. Listening to godly instruction. And, oh, my wife said about the ice cream, it's right. Get a smaller bowl, man. Are you serious? Yeah. I had about a half a gallon, so, you know. <laughs> well, you laugh. I could kill a gallon in one sitting, man. Come on. <laughs> so when are we going to listen? Listening to our wives, listening to our parents and their godly instruction. Proverbs 4, 10 to 11 says this. Flip there if you got it. 4, 10 to 11 says, my child, listen to me and do as I say, and you will have a long, good life. I will teach you wisdom's ways and lead you in straight paths. When you walk, you won't be held back. When you run, you won't stumble. Take a hold of my instructions. Don't let them go. Guard them, for they are the key to life. Interesting, huh? Why should we listen to a godly instruction? You guys are smart people. It's right there, isn't it? Why should we listen? Let's have a look. My child, listen to me and do as I say, and you will have long good life. I'll teach you wisdom's ways and lead you in straight paths. That's why, right? When you walk, you won't be held back. Right? Why else? You won't stumble. Just say it right out. Take hold of my instructions. Guard them. Because they're the key to life. These are just a few reasons why we ought to listen to our parents' instruction. There's so many more, and you can just dig into those. Maybe in your small group, if you go to a Go to a small group that uh, talks, does a sermon discussion. You can just dig into some of those scriptures and realize why we should listen to our parents. Um, discernment and joy also are discussed in, in Proverbs throughout. That you'll have discernment if you listen to your parents. And the question probably comes to your mind, well, wait a minute, how do I listen? You know, if I'm a, if I'm a child right now, I'm in my parents' home, how, how do I listen? How, is, how, do, how can I do this? Well, I got one, uh, one quick suggestion Turn it off, <laughs> right? Turn it off, take it out, <laughs> put it down, turn your Xbox off, turn your TV off, turn your radio off. You know, all my students are smiling. Mm, not me. <laughs> turn it off and listen. That's a start, yeah? Same thing can go for you ad- adult children. Maybe go back to your parents. Listen to their instruction. Maybe you don't go back physically to them, but maybe you think about, what was some of their instruction in this area of my life? Maybe you're facing something 
that you need instruction on, and you remember their instruction. So, how to listen. Watch their lives, maybe. Watch their lives. How do they react to things? How do they respond in sticky situations? When their job isn't going so great, when finances are tough, how do they react? Look at those things. Maybe you adult children, too. You look at those things and say, my parents, as elderly people, are still responding to God. If they're living godly lives, if they have Christ living in them, they have the words of life. They have Christ's power and authority. And you can see how they react. If they're spirit-filled, they're going to react how they need to be reacting, yeah? This is awesome. How else to listen? Hear their experiences. Sit down and hear their life stories. My grandfather just died this year, and, and we were so sad, but it was just amazing just to be able to sit with him and just hear some of his life experiences. Served in the South Pacific in World War II. And just to hear his stories and to hear those things, it just gave me great energy for the Lord. I remember the one time he told me how he came to know the Lord Jesus. His wife led him to the Lord. And he just said it with tears in his eyes. It was just awesome. Listen, sit down as a child, even an adult child, and hear their experiences. Tell me about that time you did this. I want to hear that story about that. Even if it's the thousandth time you've heard it, you know. That will honor your parents. That will honor your parents. So, as the great theologian, Mr. T, once said, <laughs> why are you laughing? Mr. T's a great theologian. Come on. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Uh, Mr. T said this, treat your mother right, fool. <laughs> it just makes sense, right? It just makes sense. <laughs> Then the question comes, should you always listen to your parents? Should you always listen to your parents? I haven't had many situations when a student or someone, a child has come to me and said, hey, I'm having this situation with my parents. Um, I don't want to listen to them. Their, their instruction is terrible in this area. Not had many of those situations. The only things I can think of and, and that the scripture kind of tells is if your parents are telling you or commanding you to do something immoral, unethical, or unbiblical. That's the only things I can think of. And I have not had very many, you know, man, my mom, dude, she is telling me to cheat on this test. I got to get an A. You know what I'm saying? You know, more, more like study for this test. You got to get an A, right? I've never really had that happen. So should we always listen? You know, maybe your parents uh, don't walk with the Lord. Maybe they don't. Maybe they don't have the Lord in your life. Maybe you've received Jesus and you're the one person in your family who has. And you could be the godly example. Now, even in that scenario, I've never really heard very many opportunities where someone said, man, my parents are just telling me to do something that's totally against what the Lord has asked me to do. You know, I've never really had that hit happen. It may happen, but I've never really seen it. The second thing we can do to honor our parents, the reactions we can have, is we can embrace their correction. Embracing their correction. What does this mean? embracing their correction to understand the root of why they're correcting you to understand that and to try to take that and seek understanding and what that means and then embrace that for your life and try to implement the behavior that they're asking you to, to live yeah or to act out so maybe you have maybe you don't have christian christian parents uh that, that's probably likely very likely in a crowd like this and so how do I embrace their correction? If it's something you see as a godly pattern and maybe they've corrected you as a child growing up, then you take that for your life as an adult children even. And take those things on and say, yeah, I, I need to do this as a pattern. So, and try to implement that new behavior in your life. Why should we embrace? Maybe comes a question. Why should we embrace? Well, uh, 19, Proverbs 19, verse 18 says, let's flip there if you got it. Got to have agile fingers. 19, verse 18 says, discipline your children. This is coming from a parent's perspective now. Discipline your children while there is hope. Otherwise, you will ruin their lives. Otherwise, you'll ruin their lives. 
Um, yeah, this is a why. So this is from parents, and for you as children to embrace your parents' correction because you don't want to have a ruined life. I, I one time uh, was at Safeway, and it was in the, you know, sometimes you see children interact with their parents in the, in the line. I was waiting in line there and behind a child. He must have been eight or nine years old, enough to bargain. You guys, parents know about bargaining, right? <laughs> Um, only he wasn't bargaining so much as begging for a candy bar. You know, that's what, typically what happens there at that part of the sh- grocery store. And he was, Mommy, I want this candy bar. You know, and he must have begged five or six times. She said, no, 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 no. So she turns around to pay. And, as, and I'm watching this whole thing. I'm just like, what's going to happen here? He didn't put it back. <laughs> and uh, as soon as she turns around, he had opened it up, taken a bite. <laughs> I was like, ooh. <laughs> But what happened was the mother had paid for it. You read my mind. She ended up paying for it. She kind of gave it to him. Why would you do that? But she ended up paying for it in the end, yeah? Well, she's got to, yeah? I just thought, you are ruining this kid's life. That he can just go around and grab and take whatever he wants and that it's his? Is this how life works? No way. Ruining his life. He's going to think at some point he's going he's to get smacked by somebody, right? <laughs> Taking what he, what's not his. Man, what a, it's going to ruin. So Proverbs plays out true. It's not a command, but it's a, it, it, it plays out true as we see it, right? You ruin your life. Proverbs 3.11 also gives us a why. Flip there with me. 3.11 and 12. It's one of the greatest passages in Proverbs, I think. My child, don't reject the Lord's discipline and don't be upset when he corrects you. For the Lord corrects those he loves, just as a father corrects a child in whom he delights. So why should we embrace our parents' correction and discipline? Because if you can embrace your parents' discipline, then you can't embrace God's discipline. And God disciplines those he loves for and cares for. If you want to embrace and receive God's correction, you have to receive your parents. Now, as an adult child, you can do this. You can, it's really all about, about submission, isn't it? And about, and about humbling yourself. I mean, if you've ever been corrected, it's embarrassing, yeah? It's embarrassing. So when you are corrected, you humble yourself to receive it. You have to humble yourself to receive it. Same thing goes for the Lord's discipline. As you've received the Lord's discipline, if you ever have, if you ever felt that, the Lord is disciplining me here. You have to humble yourself to receive it. Right? So, if you can't receive your parents' discipline, how can you receive the Lord's? How can we embrace? So this is the question that comes next. How? How does it happen? How do we do it? Kind of, again, the same theme. Pay attention. Take the earbuds off. Pay attention. Yeah? If your parents are correcting you, understand the root of it. Why? Why are they correcting me? So I can change my behavior and move toward the correction. Right? Move toward the new behavior. Um, Maybe, 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 you, you just have to live under that discipline for a while. If you're a child right now in your, in your parents' home, you have to live under that discipline where maybe they've grounded you even or punished you or, or disciplined you for something. You have to receive that and live under it, you know. You got privileges taken away or you got discipline somehow. You have to live under that for a time, right? Because that's the way you learn. Why am I under this discipline? Why am I grounded, you know? Why do I have privileges taken away? And you think about every time you want to do that thing like play Xbox, you think about... The discipline and why it happened. I can't play Xbox today. And especially when you have to tell friends, you know, I'm grounded, right? <laughs> why are you grounded? <laughs> and it comes out, I lied or whatever else. And you're learning how to tell the truth, right? Learning how to tell the truth. So, I remember one time, uh, I, as a child, I really did not like discipline. I did not embrace it. I bucked it many times. And uh, I remember one particular time, uh, I grew up in South Carolina, and you guys say, oh, you don't have an accent. Well, you grew up in South Carolina? 
well, I can have an accent now if you want me to. We can go back. Um, but, uh, yeah, I grew up in South Carolina. It's hot, man. I mean, we are spoiled here. We're really weather, weather brats, honestly. <laughs> it is hot in South Carolina, okay? You know, the 95 days, 95 degree days we've had, plus 100% humidity equals South Carolina. <laughs> um, so we, uh, we grew up in the South, and it's hot. doesn't snow there hardly ever except for a light dusting, and then as, as soon as it, you know, dusts, it, uh, it evaporates, you know, and, and, and we're back to shorts, right? Um, so in South Carolina, one day I remember we had a, a pretty good snowstorm and an ice storm, and it was, we woke up to it on Sunday morning. It was like, whoa, whoa, there's snow on the ground. It stayed on the ground. It's ice now. This is awesome. <laughs> yes. So we bolted out the door, and my mom's like, hold up, it's Sunday, we're going to church. Oh, no, it's going to melt, man. <laughs> it never stays on the ground. So we, we go to church, and man, it's one of those long ones, you know. He preached a, he preached a double, double sermon, you know, and, and, uh, then he, and he said, let's pray. And I was like, yes, yes. And then he preached a sermon in the prayer, and I'm like, no, no, come on. Ah, and there's snow on the ground. Don't you see it? <laughs> so he prayed and said amen, and we were out the door, pew, out the door. And there was just this, li- there was a parking lot, that's it, at our church, right? And there was this little hill, maybe about as big as these three stairs here. And we were, well, everything's big when you're that big, you know. So it was like the only thing we could find, okay, to slide down. I mean, snow and ice, I mean, come on. No sleds, what is going on? So we had to do anything we could. So uh, we're all standing in line waiting, everybody's just, taking their turn down this sled, right, this little hill, and uh, it's not a hill, it's just a, like a bump, really, actually, so, uh, <laughs> so I'm standing in line, my brother uh, standing behind me, and we had, we had, I guess, what you'd call a, a friendly sibling rivalry, you yeah. and uh, so he's standing behind me, and he gives me one of these numbers, boom, big old elbow right to the back of my back, and I fly off this thing feet in the air and land on my back (laughs) and uh so yeah so it was it was de-cleated if you ever play anybody ever play football you get de-cleated when you get when you get hit and you land on your shoulder pads you know your cleats go out from under you de-cleated I got (laughs) de-cleated and uh, I was on my back as I was I remember this as I was flipping out of the air I was like oh shoot except I didn't say that S word. I said the other S word. Luckily enough, I was in the church parking lot, and even luckier still, there was an elder in the neighborhood of my uh, cry of pain. He came to grab me by the nap. What is it with pastor's kids, huh? I mean, really, Jeff's story last week, flipping his dad off. I mean, come on. He, f- he pulled me by the nap of the neck and, and uh, took me over to, you know, this boy, blah, 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 blah. And uh, you, you know how the rest goes. It, uh, boy, the ride home was very um, intense, let's say that. Quiet. Not a word. Intense. <laughs> Quiet. So I got home, and my mom came in. I, I was, uh, my mom just came in the room, bolts of lightning coming out of her eyes the thunder coming out of her mouth and just let into me and i'm sitting there just like whatever dude everybody says it raymond says it my brother it's where i learned it you know i didn't say all that of course i was quite quiet as a church mouse (laughs) but she let into me you know but i didn't embrace that correction I remember being really resistant. Come on, whatever. Lighten up. Right? Lighten up. I didn't embrace correction. But today, I embrace that correction for my life. I see how dangerous profanity is for my life. Yeah? The scriptures and how, and how terribly people see you if you use profanity. So I've embraced that correction finally as an adult, as an adult child of my parents. Embrace that correction. So this is maybe a little bit of how you can embrace it. Maybe you don't even embrace it as a child like I did. You look back on it and you say, wow, what a powerful correction they gave me. And I'm so thankful for that. I've learned those lessons. So then the third way we can react to our parents really quickly because I'm running out of time. 
don't forget their wisdom. Don't forget their wisdom. As I was looking through Proverbs and kind of understanding wisdom and, and you know, what our parents have done for us and what they can do for us with their wisdom, I thought of Jesus' words where Jesus and his disciples, they're getting together and Jesus, some of the Jesus' followers are leaving. Not his disciples, but, but his followers, just kind of the, the ho-hum followers. They're taking off. And Jesus says, wait a minute, you, are you 12 going to leave me too? And here's what Peter says. Turn to John 6, 68 with me if you got it. John 6, 68. He says this, Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom would we go? For you have the words of eternal life. We believe and we know you're the Holy One of God. If your parents have trusted Christ, Christ has taken up residence in them. And they then have the words of life. And so, never forget your parents' wisdom. Never forget your parents' wisdom. This is awesome. Maybe you could just ask your parents for some wisdom. Maybe you as a, as a child in your house today, you go home and ask your parents for wisdom. Hey, Mom, Dad, I need some wisdom. After you wake them up, knock them off off the floor, tell, sit down with them and say, hey, uh, <laughs> I need some wisdom. They might faint again, but, you know, we'll just work through this, right? Give me some wisdom. Ask them for it. Maybe you're having a challenging situation. Maybe you as an adult child also have a challenging situation. You can also ask for wisdom from your older parents. Maybe they're even elderly. Ask them for wisdom. Have a challenging situation here. What should I do? Pray for me. So Psalm, uh, Proverbs 23, 15 says this. Turn there with me. Got to go quick. Flip quick. 2315 says, my child, if your heart is wise, my own heart will rejoice. What an honor to your parents if you grow up with wisdom. They would look at you and say, wow, I have a child who's wise. How much joy would that give them, huh? What an honor to them for you to never forget their wisdom. Look also at uh, 4, 1 through 7. Flip real quick. 4, 1 through 7 says this. My children, listen when your father corrects you. Pay attention and learn good judgment, for I'm giving you good guidance. Don't turn away from my instructions, for I too was once my father's son, tenderly loved as my mother's only child. My father taught me, take my words to heart, follow my commands, and you will live. Get wisdom, develop good judgment. Don't forget my words or turn away from them. Don't turn your back on wisdom, for she will protect you, love her, and she will guard you. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. Duh. And whatever else you do, develop good judgment. It's just a plea from a father to develop wisdom. To get wisdom. Don't leave it. She'll protect you. Wisdom will protect you if you hold on to it. Hold on to my wisdom. So as I think about it, I, I, I was thinking about, well, so, if I, if I need to hold on to wisdom, what are some of the things that my parents have given me that have lasted, instilled in me? And as, you, as I talk to you guys about this, you think, too, about your own parents. What are those things that have lasted in my life or that they're starting to be built in that I want to keep? I, I thought about the first one. I, I think the first one that, that, that I can really point out to is that knowledge comes from God alone. My parents instilled this in me from day one, I think. That knowledge and wisdom originate and stay with God alone and that he gives to them and through them to me. God alone has all wisdom and all knowledge. And so if you, wanna, you want any wisdom, you know where to go. That's what they instilled in me. I think uh, the second thing I can think of really just as a, as a whole life thing is a discipline for life. Discipline for life. Not to go ahead and grab what I want right away and just take it. To be where I'm supposed to be, to do what I'm supposed to do. 
That type of thing. Just that discipline for everyday life. Not being lazy. And I appreciate that so much. The third thing I think that, that, that uh, is really incredible in my life is they have taught me all my life to have Christ as my life's only treasure. And I can't repay that. That is the most incredible thing that I could have been given by them. To have Christ as my life's treasure. And I've never been dissatisfied with him. The fourth thing I can think of, Dad, you may remember this. When we were coming out to California, my dad just gave me a few pieces of advice. He has, he has three by five cards like coming out of everywhere. This is what he does, three by five cards. And so, uh, so he had a three by five card and he just put, put, took it out of his pocket as we were coming to California. It's been six years now, going on seven we've been here. He gave me a, a three by five card and, and uh, with a little bit of advice on it. You know, he had a bullet points, you know, it's a pastor for you. He had bullet points, uh, three or four bullet points. And, and one of them was no cable. Don't have cable in your house. Not cables, but cable. TV cable. And I, it's weird, but it works out. It works out. It's awesome. No cable. Don't even let temptation come into your home. Isn't that awesome? It's a pretty gr- great piece of advice. And I, we, we don't have cable. We have, yeah. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, he also said, don't have any women friends that aren't yours and Simona's friends together. Wow. Strong piece of advice. We've done it to this day. Lindsay's one of our greatest friends. She comes over every Thursday, and she's both of our great friends, you know? Really awesome. To have women friends that are both of our friends, but to resist the other. Great piece of advice. Thanks, Dad. The fifth thing I think uh, that uh, my mom especially did for me was pretty incredible was she led me to Christ when I was maybe five or six. We were memorizing scripture together at Romans, I still remember to this day, Romans uh, 9 verse 10 says, if anyone calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they will be saved. I wondered, what does it mean to be saved? My mom explained. She said, well, Richard, you've done some wrong stuff in your life. Uh huh. <laughs> you need Jesus. Yeah, I like Jesus. He's cool. <laughs> You need to be saved. And all you have to do is invite him into your life. Trust him. And I did. And it was awesome. And that's something I could never repay. My parents leading me to Christ. My dad said this actually before, also before we left. He said this. He said, I had a thought the other day. And I said, yeah, thoughts are good. Keep coming. <laughs> we like thoughts. And he gave us a thought. He said, I thought the other day that I have had a hand somehow in leading all my children to Christ. And that, that's good. That's all he said. He walked out of the room. I was like, yeah, yeah, that, that's good. What he said. <laughs> that's good. Would you love to have a hand in leading all your children to Christ? The most important thing I think they've taught me is wisdom that I've held on to this for this long a time is patience and endurance and through trials and reliance on God in him. Ah, we've gone through a ton. Many of you guys know with Anna and everything, we've gone through a lot of trials, a lot of t- t- tough times. But their wisdom and knowledge and all the trials that we faced as a family was handed on to me, and I can't replace that for anything. Reliance on God in trials. I thank them deeply for all these things. So, um, there's this guy in the Old Testament. He only appears in a couple places. In Kings and in in the book of Jeremiah. His name was Jonadab. His name was Jonadab. And this guy, Jonadab, only set up a few rules for his family. Like four rules, to be exact. The first one was don't drink wine. The second one was don't plant. Don't plant. Any, I mean, uh, don't don't plant anything in the ground. Be shepherds, and then have tents. Live in tents. Don't live in homes. And then worship the Lord your God. Worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they did this. Interestingly enough, they show up. The sons of Jonadab, two hundred years after he had set up these family rules, showed up, 
And in, in the book of Jeremiah, when Israel has gone astray from God, they have abandoned God to worship idols. The prophet Jeremiah calls the sons of Jonadab into the temple to worship. It's in Jeremiah 35. Go look it up. It's really wild. And they come in, and, and Jeremiah kind of tests them. He says he tries to offer them wine. And they say, certainly not. Our father Jonadab has set up a rule that we should not drink wine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they refused. And Jeremiah says this. He uses that as an illustration of Israel's disobedience. He says, look, Israel, look at the sons of Jonadab. Their dad only set up four rules. And they have obeyed them hundreds of years later. Shame on you, you know, kind of thing. You can't even worship God. Not only do they worship God, they've followed their father's rules. And here's what happens. Turn to Jeremiah 35 with me. Awesome. Wow, one of the best promises in the whole Bible. Jeremiah 35. I'm not going to read the whole passage. You can read the chapter yourself. It's pretty awesome. 18, verse 18 in Jeremiah 35 says this. Then Jeremiah turned to the sons of Rechab. Actually, after, after he had kind of blasted Israel for their disobedience, he turns to the sons of Rechab and says this. And Rechab was Jonadab's father. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. You have obeyed your ancestor Jonadab in every respect, following all his instructions. Therefore, this is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Jonadab, son of Rechab, will always have descendants to serve me forever. Whoa. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. So, the sons of Jonadab are somewhere in, in this world today serving God. Probably preaching somewhere. Probably leading Sunday school somewhere. Probably serving God on the mission field somewhere. Because he made four rules and was faithful to his family. One guy transformed his entire heritage. Awesome, huh? So the question today is, is your vision for your family too short-sighted? As a father, or even as a child. See, the, the sons of Jonadab, they had to obey, yeah? They had to obey their father. And they did. Is your vision for family too short-sighted? What I mean by that is, I feel like sometimes we, we as Christians, we do great. We, we do okay. We, we think of our children and we want them to come to know the Lord. We pray for them. We, we lead them, lead them into, in, in knowing Christ and bring them to church and everything like that. But we fall short because we think of our children only. And we don't think of their children and their children. And pray for your great-great-grandchildren. Is your vision, vision for your family too short-sighted, too narrow? I, I, it was wild. My dad actually wrote a book about this guy. The promise, it's called The Promise of Jonadab. I've got some copies out there if you're interested in buying it. It's about this guy and how he was faithful to his family and how other people in the world have also been faithful and their generations of their family have been transformed because of the power of the gospel and them being faithful to their children. Now, you may, you may be here today, and you may say, Richard, man, my family stinks. <laughs> the likelihood is pretty high that someone in here has fathers who've been deadbeats, maybe even mothers. Maybe you don't even know your family. Likelihood is pretty high, I guess. But here's a great promise. Psalms 27, verse 10 says this. Even if my mother and father abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. If you're here today and maybe you've just received Christ, praise God because the Lord will hold you close. Maybe you haven't accepted Jesus and today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow because the Lord will hold you close. The Lord is not like your father that abandoned you. 
he will hold you close. And that's it, you know. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving me life in you and then being my heavenly father who wants my good and not my destruction, who won't abandon me. Maybe you're that person today. Maybe you just need to say, wow, it's about time. I just say yes to Jesus. Jesus, I need you. I need you. I need you. Thank you for being a father who holds me close. And, it, and it's, not, it's not like you do any magic potion. It's not like you pray a magic prayer. You just say yes to Jesus. Trust him with your life. Give him everything you are because he's a good father. And he came and died for your sins. He took your place, the place you should have had because your sins deserve punishment and my sins deserve punishment. So that you could have life. Doesn't that sound good? <laughs> it's an awesome thing. Maybe you need to trust Christ tonight, today for the first time. If you do, that's awesome. You can pray with me a simple prayer real quick. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you came to die a cruel death for us. That we could have life and have life everlasting. And not only that, but we can have life more abundantly here on this earth. Lord Jesus, we give you our lives. If you want to pray this simple prayer, you can with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I thank you for taking my place when I should have paid the penalty for my own sins. Lord Jesus, I believe you. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you were dead and buried and raised from the dead on the third day to conquer death for me. Lord Jesus, would you come into my life? Give me a new life. Give me a fresh start. Help me to follow you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. Maybe you prayed that prayer with me just now, and, and, and I'd love to know about that so we can help you on your walk with Jesus now. You can take one of those uh, papers right in the seat back in front.